What's up, everybody? I'm going to go ahead and save this in the middle here. Working on geometric series, hopefully you've just come from arithmetic series. Um, arithmetic series where we're adding up an arithmetic sequence, geometric series where we're adding up a geometric sequence. Okay, so geometric series is the sum of a geometric sequence. Where n is the, I guess I need the n first, the number of terms um, that we're going to be adding. Where a1 is the first term. And where R is the ratio. Oh, no end. Now, the formula here is going to look more complicated. Sn is equal to the fraction of A1 times 1 minus R to the power of N over 1 minus R. It's definitely going to look more complicated. Okay, as you see it, you're like, okay, it's a fraction. We got R's, we got N's, we got A's. However, it is not nearly as complicated as the arithmetic series formula. Okay, and the reason is, notice that we don't need term N. We don't need A N. Okay, and so we don't have to go find A N in order to come back and find S N. All we need is the first term the ratio, and the number that we're trying to find, okay? So this formula is actually much easier to use than the other formula that we just got finished using, okay? For example, for this question, we need to find the 14th term and add them all together, but we don't actually need to find term 14, okay? All we need is to say that the sum of the first 14 is the first number, times 1 minus the ratio to the power of 14 all over 1 minus the ratio. So we do need to find the ratio, okay, which might take us a second or two looking at this question to go from 4 to 20, from 20 to 100, from 100 to 500. Our ratio here is times 5, okay? So we need a 5 here, we need a 5 here, and that's it, okay? It's time to go ahead and add these together. Now, what I will say though is that we have a bit of a a bit of a problem, okay? And that if we're going to keep multiplying by 5 and we're going to do 5 to the power of 14, that is going to be a gigantic number. And not only is that number going to be big, we're going to have to add the 14th term, which is going to be huge, and add on to that the 13th term, and add on to that the 12th term. And so our answers here can be very, 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 very huge. Okay, Some of the questions on this worksheet in particular, the answers are just ridiculous at times. So let's go to Desmos and type this in. Let's go to Desmos. That would be a fraction where we need A1, so we need... 4 on top times 1 minus 5 to the power of 14, and on bottom, 1 minus 5. You can see when we've done that, we've gotten some scientific notation here, and it kind of sucks because scientific notation is annoying and isn't necessarily the, the number that we want to see, right? We would need to go ahead and move this decimal point nine spots. And just so you guys know, you know, nine spots, moving this point, nine spots is going to make you a giant, giant, giant number, maybe even billion. So looking at this, let's just write it, though, as 6.103 times 10 to the power of nine. On your test in my class, I'm not going to give you scientific notation answers. They might be big. They might be a million. They might be a thousand. They might be a hundred thousand but I don't really like scientific notation questions. Now looking at number two is where we get into kind of our big idea for today though, okay? We've got another pattern, 81, 27, 9, 3, and we need to find the sum of the first 
20 of these things. Now, if we need to find the sum of the first 20, and we looked at number one, and we were only doing the sum of the first 14, and the answer was a billion, how are we going to add up 20 things? The answer is going to be a quadrillion, right? But if you look at number two, how is number two fundamentally different than number one? How is the sequence, how is the pattern itself different from number one to number two? So number one is a pattern that's getting bigger super, super fast. Number two is a pattern that's actually getting smaller. And so as this pattern gets smaller, we're eventually going to get to the point where we're just adding these little tiny crumbs, right? Where we've got such a small number at the end of our pattern that when we add it on as a part of a series, it's not going to do so much, okay? In order to find our ratio, we can always do the second divided by the first. So if I take these two terms, I can always do second divided by first and figure out that we have one third as our ratio. So our formula here, S20 is equal to A1 times one minus R, which we just found was a fraction, one third. And we need that to be to the power of 20, all divided by one minus one third. And that should be our formula. Again, it's not as difficult as the arithmetic formula because we don't have to go and find term 20 itself. All we need is the first term, the ratio, and the number that we're looking for, which is 20 here. Now, again, I found the ratio by doing second divided by first. I could have chosen any of these pairs, right? I could have chosen these two. 27 divided by 81 is still one third. And now I just need to go and type that in Desmos. That would be a fraction, 81, our first term, 1 minus r, our r is 1 third to the power of 20 in the denominator. We need to have 1 minus 1 third. And you can see here that my answer is 121.49999999999. It's not, you know, 10 quadrillion because our numbers are getting smaller, and so we're not just going up and up and up and up and up, bigger, 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 bigger. We're kind of getting capped out. Cool. Let's just put 121.499, repeating, whatever. Let's just leave it with that. Now, we got to another question here. And I don't really like this question. I don't think that you'll really see a question like this. It's asking you to add up all these numbers. And then we have a dot, dot, dot. And then it's giving you a final term here. Okay, it's giving you this 6,144 as the end of the series. So if you look at the difference up here, this is a series that goes on until you get to infinity. And it's telling you, I only want the first 14. With number three, it's saying this is a end of a series. And so add up all those numbers. The problem is we don't know what term number 6,144 is. Okay. And so what I would recommend that you do is you just keep multiplying by two because that's the ratio until you figure out what this would be. You know, after this, it's going to be 48. It's going to be 96. It's going to be 192. It's going to be 384. It's going to be 768. It's going to be 14. Nope. 14, 15. I don't know. Let's just do it in Desmos. 768 times 2. Seven six eight. Ooh. Still not yet there. So times two again is going to be three thousand seventy two. And it looks like we're going to get there with our next jump, right? Times two should be six one four four. All right. So here's all the numbers that we need to add up. 
We need to add up. And it's not just the ones we found. We need to add up term 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We need to add up all the first 12 terms we didn't know that 6,144 was the 12th term. Now we do know it's the 12th term. You can either get out a calculator and start adding them up, or you can do the formula, which would be the sum of the first 12 is 3 times 1 minus 2 to the power of 12 over 1 minus 2. Either way, now we're able to solve it. So if you get one of these questions where you're missing some terms here, you need to just go ahead and figure out how many steps does it take you until you get to this number? And then you can go either brute force or the formula now. Shouldn't be too bad. We might see a question like this. Seeing a question like this is not too bad. We know how to handle this. This is sigma notation. We're going into Desmos. So we're going into Desmos. Let me get my face out of the way. We're going to functions. We're going to miscellaneous. You know, normally it's going to start you here. We need to go to miscellaneous. We need to get this sigma notation. We're going from 1 to 25. And then we need 2 to the exponent of n minus 1. 2 to the exponent of n, n minus 1. Remember, you're going to need these parentheses to keep the minus 1 up in the numerator. If you don't have them, and you try to do n minus 1, it's going to come out of the numerator, and that's going to change your answer a whole lot. Look, this right here is 67 million if the one's in the wrong place. If you put the one in the right place, it's only going to be 33 million. So it's going to cut, I mean, it's literally going to cut our number in half, basically, but there you go. 33, 554, 431. Three, three, five, five, four, four, three, one, something like that. Nailed it. Um, I don't think we need to do the rest of these. I think you guys get the idea. Just make sure you type them in carefully. Make sure that your letters match. This is something that we talked about in the other video, but N and N need to match. It could be X and X. It could be J and J. It doesn't matter what it is. Just sort it out. Now, the final thing that we're going to talk about here is an infinite series, okay? Can you add up an infinite number of numbers together and not just get infinity, okay? So for example, if I do this, two plus four plus six plus eight dot, 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 tell me the sum of the infinite series. If you add every single number up in the pattern, what are you gonna get? And it's an easy answer. You're going to get infinity. Okay. The numbers are going to keep getting bigger. You'll have to keep adding bigger and bigger numbers. You'll never stop. You'll never be done forever. Now, if we look at these tables, and I don't think we're going to have time to go through this. Okay. Notice how this series is doing the same thing. Okay. It's getting bigger and bigger as it goes on. Okay, it's going to keep adding. We're going to have to add 16. We're going to have to add 32. Eventually, we're going to have to add 2,048. Eventually, we're going to have to add 4,096. Eventually, we're going to have to add 10,231,000. I mean, whatever. And so, because these numbers are getting bigger and we're adding them up, it's called a divergent series because the answer is going to be infinity. Now, if you look at this other series, these answers, these numbers, these terms are getting smaller and smaller, okay? We're adding 1 16th, which is a little crumb. And then we're going to add 1 32nd, which is a little crumb, okay? Imagine, and pardon my drawing skills here, but imagine that you have a circle, okay? And we're going to add up all of these slices of pizza, okay? So to start, we're gonna add up half the pizza. And then we're gonna go, next up, we're gonna go to one fourth, and we're gonna add a fourth of the pizza to that. And then next up, we're gonna add one eighth, so let's add an eighth of the pizza to that. 
And then next up, let's add 1 16th. So let's add 1 16th of the pizza to that. And then next up, let's add 1 over 32. So let's add 1 over 32 to that. And what you probably are recognizing is that we're never going to fill up the pizza. Okay, it's, it, go, it goes back to that asymptote discussion we had where we're getting closer and closer. I talked about how your, your geometric sequences are kind of like exponential because you have that exponential growth because you have that exponent, which is a variable. This will converge and it's called convergent because if you do the sum of this sequence, it will converge on a number. Okay, and let's make that clear. The ratio here, we're getting half as big, so the ratio is equal to one half. If we go to Desmos and we do our formula, okay, it would need to be the first term, which is 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 to the power of, just put it in there, and then 1 minus 0.5 on the bottom. And then let's add a slider for n. I'll make n go to 1,000. So here we go. We're adding a slider to n. Right now, if our exponent is 1, if we add up, this is the sum of one thing. The answer is going to be 0.5. If we add together six things, from this pattern, it's going to be 0.98. If we add together 10 things, it's going to be 0.99. If we add together 30 things, 35 things, 40 things, eventually it is converging. Desmos is rounding here. It is converging and getting closer and closer and closer to 1. Now, Desmos is about to round this to 1. In reality, it's not really getting to 1, but... Notice how I don't care if I add together literally the first 1,000 terms. It's not going to get bigger than 1. Okay, And so technically, I can add up an infinity number of things because we're getting smaller. So let's write this down. We're almost done. If R is less than 1, it is convergent. And the reason is that if you are shrinking you are going to be converging on a number. If R is greater than one, it is divergent because if you are growing, you are getting away from numbers, you're gonna go up to infinity. Now the sum of an infinite series, sometimes you'll see a question like this, tell me the sum of an infinite number, it's gonna be A1 over one minus R. That's it. So let's look at these. Number nine, are these numbers getting smaller? Yes. One four. Yeah, sorry. Absolutely. Is that good enough? These numbers are getting smaller. And so if these numbers are getting smaller, then we should be able to find an answer for adding up an infinite number of things in this pattern. Okay. Sum of an infinite number of things is going to be one over one minus r. We need to find out what R is. And so if I take any of these two things and I do second divided by first, second divided by first, that's just one fourth. And so my R would be one fourth. And so that will be my answer if I add up an infinite number of things. Let's see that. One over one minus one turn it into a fraction if I want four thirds or if I have a decimal 1.333333 we are converging on 1.33 repeating we are converging on four thirds okay we will never get more than four thirds we are stuck there because eventually when we add the 20th term in this pattern it is a microscopic little crumb it does nothing it doesn't actually add anything it does technically but doesn't really make a difference okay 
that is pretty much all we're going to do. Um, when you see a question like this, the sum of an infinite number of things, you can do a few things. What I would recommend is just type like 999 as your infinity. That's big enough that it will make sense. Desmos will calculate 999 of them and it will handle it from there. Another thing that you could do is you could recognize um, that this is your first term and this is your ratio. So you could say that sum of infinity is equal to negative two over one minus one fourth. But what I would recommend is just type in a bunch of nines as your top number so that it will handle it. All right, that is geometric series. Again, for the most part, it has an easier formula than arithmetic because we don't have to go find a in. You also have to know the difference between a convergent and a divergent series, the difference between being able to add up an infinite number of things and not. So that's that. Geometric series, we're almost done with the year.